Hi, my name is Paul Morris and I'm a restoration ecologist and my partner Sophia is an agronomist and we're going to be talking about biochar and how to make biochar so we're going to go through that process. In our first video we're going to be talking about how to do it with a contiki and how to do it with an oil barrel. Biochar is actually a substance used by indigenous peoples in places like the Amazon and so they found terra, terra preta in the Amazon and it was biochar basically incorporated into the soil mixed in with a bunch of different things and what they found is that that, that soil was super rich. So one of the reasons that we're making biochar is climate change. So what we're doing is burning the woody material, which is about 50% carbon. So that 50% carbon goes back into the soil once you put it into your gardens and into your growing beds. So taking that carbon out of the atmosphere, the trees, the plants, they bring it into their system and it becomes fixed carbon. So when we burn it, it becomes inert and then once you put it in the soil, it will last hundreds and even thousands of years. So, so just doing that process, it, it, we're reducing the amount of carbon in the atmosphere and we continuously extracting and extracting and taking the carbon out of the soil. And so we need to be putting that back into the soil so that, the, so that we can reduce the carbon in the atmosphere. Uh, small scale, we're not doing a lot, but I mean, Pile after pile of this stuff we're putting into the ground. You're increasing the amount of organic carbon in the, in the soil. You're increasing year after year because we're, we're finding with the, the biochar that we're putting into our gardens, year after year it's enriching more and more. So you know the first year you have a little bit of stimulus in your growth but by the third year you know we're getting vegetables that are double the size. In the Yucatan, we were getting, the Mayan people were growing squash and they're about yay big. But after three years, we were growing the exact same squash and they're huge, much larger size. And, and our neighbor was completely surprised when we showed it to him. We have corn, you know, they're getting Mayan corn about yay big. And our corn's about this big. Theirs is growing about yay tall. And ours is growing almost twice the height in the biochar. So, I mean, this stuff is really improving the soil and really enriching the soil. So instead of the, the nutrients just washing through with a heavy rain, it's being trapped into the soil. The moisture is being trapped in the soil from every, any sort of moisture that comes down. So we're holding all this stuff there. It's got good aeration because all this carbon has a lot of air space in, be, in between. As you can see, it's very friable and the, the microorganisms can just go right through it. And you see, if, once it's fully colonized, you'll open it up and it'll be white inside because the, the microorganisms have penetrated all the way into it. So overall, it's an excellent system. We put it into all our, our mediums in my nursery at course Restoration. I'm putting it into the, the nursery medium in the garden. I'm putting 10% into the garden. So, you know, just everywhere. When we plant trees, we put it into the holes for the tree planting. So we're using it everywhere to get more and more carbon into the soil, more and more nutrients, richer soil. So we want, we want all this stuff because we want nice, healthy plants. We want less carbon in the atmosphere. So, I mean, it's a win-win situation. Here we are. We have the uh, oil barrel. And we've loaded it up. You want to take a look inside. So we have some bigger material on the bottom, and then we have some uh, smaller kindling, and then we have this lighter stuff on the top and a bit of paper. So that's just to get it started. So here we'll just get it going. Here we go, and again, here's your white smoke. Starting to get it going. So here we are, we've got the Contiki started and we started the barrel at the same time. So at 10 o'clock we started everything and 
so far the Contiki is burned down about halfway through our pile and as you can see the smoke that comes out is fairly clear so it's burning fairly clean because of the uh, the motion that's happening here with the air currents and if we take a look over here at the barrel which was started at the same time you can see it's a little bit Right now it's not smoking too much, it's gone to its clear phase, but initially it had a lot more white smoke. So it's, uh, it's a much faster process actually. Uh, we've already got it started and we've started adding some big material into it. Whereas the Contiki, because it's, uh, we started at the top, it's slowly burning down and hasn't even, we haven't even started adding more big stuff to it. So this is more like a, a rocket, it's faster. Here we go, you can see this is what happens when we get to the, uh, the stage just before adding another layer. So you can see that it's starting to just have a light cut covering of ash on there. And so what we want to do is add another layer to that. And then once you add the next layer it cuts off the oxygen to the layer below. And so it'll stop turning to ash. So this is ready to go. Okay, so we're about 70% done. The barrel's filled to about there. As you can see, I've started adding smaller bits of wood because we want it nice and hot at the top and we want them to burn fast. We used a lot bigger wood further down, but at the top you want the char to burn really fast so that we can finish it off nicely and everything gets burnt really well. So that's the barrel. And then over here, we're still doing small stuff, we're doing large stuff. So you can do much bigger pieces in the Contiki. Hi, I'm just gonna give you a quick evaluation of this barrel on barrel method. Uh, this is a method that you can use for making biochar, but uh, I don't recommend it because it's not a... Uh, you get very little biochar out of it. The other processes that we showed you are much more efficient in giving large volumes of biochar. So what we have here is a larger barrel, so we have the same barrel we used in the, in the other biochar burn, but you can see it's got holes in the bottom here, and it's got holes on the top. So what happens is it, it has a, a, a smaller barrel on the inside and a larger barrel on the outside. And you fill the smaller barrel in the inside with wood and then you fill the outer barrel with wood as well. And then you burn the outside barrel and that, bur that heat from burning the outside wood carbonizes the smaller barrel on the inside and, it, and then you get more biochar. But as you can see on the inside, so it, it has a chimney system on the top. We're getting a hot burn. And then you can see here's our barrel on barrel. So you've got this barrel here that you're filling up to the top with wood. And then the outside barrel, you're putting in wood on the outside. But what happens with this burn, all the wood on the outside burns down to ash and the stuff on the inside burns down so that you're only getting maybe a third of the biochar, a third of the volume from biochar in, from this smaller barrel. So the efficiency of the burn is much less and it's a lot more effort to do it this way. So in the long run, I think the other system where you're just having a single barrel like we were using before, you're getting a lot more biochar, you're doing an a, a, a burn without oxygen and you're getting a lot more biochar because you can still add material back into it and as it drops down then you're still getting a lot more biochar in the finished burn. So that's just a quick evaluation of what we've got for different techniques. It still works, you still get biochar, but the volume is much, much less. And you're also wasting all this, the outside barrel's material, so it doesn't turn into biochar.
Okay, so here we are, we finished it. We filled it up with water. As you can see, the water is right here at the surface. So we filled it right up and the biochar has floated up just a little bit. So what we're gonna do next is we got some urine here, high in nitrogen, excellent source of nitrogen. And we're gonna be charging. So we use roughly a half bucket of urine is what we're going to be putting in here. Okay, so we've added the urine to the biochar. And so this is basically going to sit here overnight. And what that does is the, uh, the activated carbon that we've created with the burn will suck up all the nutrients from the nitro all the nitrogen from the urine and it'll activate it. So here we are on the final burn for the tight the Contiki. And you can see we're, we're just mixing it around to make sure we have a good burn. It's starting to get a little bit of char of uh, ash on the outside. So this is essentially done. Okay, so we're gonna put the, the biochar out. You can see it's starting to get a lot of ash on it. So that's the time. We have a few big pieces that we pulled up from the bottom that still didn't burn, but that's okay. We'll get them next time. Be really careful of the steam it can burn you. Okay, so here we have the biochar from the Contiki. And we've got the water. We filled it up with water to stop the burn. It's floating a little bit. So it's not, uh, you can't completely fill it up like we usually do. So once it's nice and wet, it's cool now. The temperature we start, we add our urine in. And what that'll do so we got a whole bunch of other containers here. What that will do, we'll, we leave it wet, so that stops the fire, stops the burn, and so it stops it from turning into ash. So if you leave any little bit burning still, it, you'll come back in the morning and it'll, uh, your biochar will have turned into ash. Okay, so this has been sitting overnight, so ever since we did it, you can see. Water's just down here. This is full of water right now. And it had the urine in it, but you smell it. You're smelling the carbon now. It's all been absorbed in. So that's what you're getting. That's your end carbon product. So now, conveniently, this has a drain on it. draining all the water off. So then we'll, bring, we'll empty the, the machine. It weighs a ton right now, so we're emptying out all the water. And we'll take off these shields that are on the side. I don't know if I can uh, show you that. This is just a shield on the side. helps keep the the temperature high insulates it also protects you from the heat and it also it creates that air vortex that you want so it comes up out the outside and then it, it comes in like a little vortex to help with the biochar's uh, oxidation to keep the oxidation low. Yeah. So we'll just drain that down and then we'll dump it out so we'll show you that next. So this has been sitting for overnight. We burned it yesterday. And this is what we've got. You can see it sucked up a fair bit of the water here. It's gone down about uh, 15 centimeters. And that's like a, a perfect home for your bacteria and your fungus to grow in. Which will, And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna drain this out. And because these are like little sponges, it sucks up so much water. 
a huge amount of water that's being sucked up in here. And so we're not going to dry it out, we're just going to lay it out and we're going to crush it a little bit. And then we're going to add our, our different components, our manure, our molasses, that sort of thing, to get the, the process started to absorb into this activated carbon. So let's, uh, we're going to just take it out and we'll lay it out because we want to lay it out nice. So when we put our manure down it's a little easier to work it in. As you can see this barrel is really heavy, full of water. Here we are, we've dumped the kiln out and you can see this is our volume of biochar here. And you see there's a few bigger lumps, those are pure carbon. And over here, where we dumped out the biochar from the, the oil drum, this is the amount of char that we got. Okay, so we've spread the biochar out, as you can see. And you can see there's some big pieces here that we want to crush down. We don't want to turn it into dust, we just want to break up the big pieces. So it's a little bit easier to distribute. So we have this roller, which we basically turn it across like this. The carpet, uh, carpet roller. Crushes it up nice. You can see we're not turning it to dust or turning, we still have some nice pieces in there. It allows the fungus and the different bacteria to have a little home to colonize rather than having it super fine and then you're not uh, you're not giving them a little bit of a, a home to establish themselves in. So then they can spread out from that piece and colonize. Uh, also, the next phase that we're going to do, we have a whole load of cow manure. Well, this is nice stuff. It's got a lot of bacteria in it. You can see these white spots. You can see, you can feel the heat off of it and it's still steaming. So this is good rich cow manure. Could use a little less straw in it, it would be easier to mix around, but I mean if you don't have uh, fresh stuff you can always use store-bought. And so we're going to also be mixing in a bit of leaf compost, uh, compost from the, from the kitchen, uh, you can put in chicken manure, you can put in all sorts of things. You want things that are super rich. So when you put it in there, it's rich in nutrients, it's got all the, uh, all the elements that you need for a healthy garden to feed the plants, but also the main focus is to feed the, the microbiome. So you want to give all the nutrients that you need. And we're also going to be putting in some sort of a, a sugar substrate, a carbohydrate substrate. You can use molasses, blackstrap molasses is really good. Uh, that's what we've been using mostly. But you can also use old flour, sugar, all these sort of things that have high carbohydrates and it's, it's basically food for all the bacteria and fungus in there. And that's going to get all mixed up into here and then we're, it's going to be supercharged. We're going to leave it for about three months in bags or you can leave it in bags or in a pile. We, in the Yucatan we put it in a pile here, we're putting it in bags and stick it in the barn. So. Basically that's what you've got. Once you've mixed all these components together, you need to, to cure it for the three months so that it turns from this, which is your activated carbon, and then into your biochar by mixing all the elements together. So what we've done is we've got a layer of biochar that we spread out and crushed it, and then we added a layer of manure. It had a fair bit of straw in it, which isn't ideal for turning. And then we added a good layer of leaf mulch, leaf compost, onto there. So we're spreading it all out, as you can see, and then we started the process of turning it. So we're going to turn it all, mix it all together, 
and so that'll allow the uh, activated carbon to mix with the manure and then we have the, the leaf compost so all these good nutrients in there and it's really going to make it a nice rich medium. Hi I'm out in the greenhouse here and I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to our our super powerful brew that we've created. So in here you can see it's we've got a bubbler in here so this keeps it oxygenated so that it doesn't go anoxic and inside here what we have is we put in a fair bit of manure we put in compost we've got uh, urine and we've also got rock dust uh, a bit of sea salt and we mix all that all together and over time we also put in different mycorrhizae, microorganisms, a bit of soil so all these things, the compost, the manure, the, the, uh, the mycorrhizal solution all this stuff is adding more and more bacteria, more, more fungus, different things into the, into the soils to make it alive so we're using this as this is our fertilizer mix. So it's got high nitrogen, high potassium, high uh, <laughs> phosphorus, <laughs> and so th then this has everything that it needs, plus all the micronutrients, plus all the all the bacteria and the fungus that makes the the roots healthy. And so we put this on, and you can see we've got a nice green color on our plants, and we fertilize this regularly. And so it just makes a really rich solution for your plants. So mixing it with the biochar, we also add this fertilizer mix onto our biochar. And we'll do another video where we actually go through and we make another barrel of this. Well, we're almost finished. We've taken our compost, manure, and our biochar. We've mixed it, put it into a big pile here so that we can... Uh, ferment it, compost it together, and the biochar will, the, the activated carbon will suck in all the nutrients. And so what we've got here is our an active component. This is our super brew. So what I've got is I take one half, one half bucket and then I've split it into two and added water to help to move it around more so it's more dilute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour that on So that'll absorb into the mix, and I've got two more buckets here that'll add on as well, making sure it's distributed nicely. And so this we're going to cover with a tarp to keep it nice and moist, and it's in a nice big pile. So we get a lot of heat activity and the microbial action and we, want, we don't want to get to get too hot and kill itself we want it to to cook a little bit so the microorganisms get into the biochar the nutrients get into the biochar and then in about three months after leaving this working for three months sometimes a little bit faster in the yucatan but here probably three months to get the, the different uh, organisms growing. So then this will be super rich. You'll have all your nutrients, all your micronutrients, you'll have your, your biochar that, that's uh, nutrient holding, and it'll have all your microorganisms and your fungus. So later on, we're gonna talk about how to incorporate it into your soil, into different mixes. Uh, I use it in my nursery, I use it in my garden. I mean, there's so many applications. So we'll go through a bunch of those. So this is going to get tarped over after and we're just going to leave it for a while. So as you can see, making biochar is uh, not a simple process. It's fairly complex. But uh, once you have the biochar in the soil, it's going to last for a thousand years because it's carbon and it's, it's inert and it's not going to go anywhere. And so it's acting like a, a sponge in the soil. So it's slowly releasing nutrients. 
difference when you add more nutrients and compost on the top instead of the nutrients running through the soil the the carbon will hold on to it for you and slowly release it back so we're holding this for a couple months we've got it tarped up and it's ready to go okay so this biochar has been sitting here for about a month now and different creatures have uh, started to inhabit it we've got snakes have come and shed their skins here. We've got uh, mushrooms that have come up. So it's just full of organisms. And let's take a look what it looks like after a month. So look at that. So you can see it's not hot anymore. It's not steaming. So it's finished its uh, rapid breakdown. So now the the microorganisms are inside the biochar and a lot of nutrients have gone in there but we still want to leave it for another couple months because it's going to still keep absorbing those nutrients and we want it to do that absorption process here before we put it into our field look at that that's beautiful now so it's all nice and mixed in together it's really doesn't have any smell. So yeah, that's good stuff. And you can see all sorts of little creatures are, are working away inside here. They run away as soon as they get into the light, but there's a lot of them in there. You can see them going. They're all breaking down the, the manure and the compost that we put in there. So they're having a good time. This is their habitat now. So our next stage is we're just going to put this all into into bags, and we're going to stick it in the in the barn for a while, and then later on we'll be able to use it. So I'm here in the greenhouse, and I'm just taking a look at some of the root system that we've got here. And if you look carefully, you can see. I'll just pull one off the top here. We've got biochar mixed in here and we've got about uh, we put in about 10% biochar into our soil mix and so that's adding t different nutrients to the to the soil adding the microorganisms to the soil so it's like an inoculant and as you can see we've got really good root growth coming out the bottom nice healthy plants so these plants are doing really well and we, uh, we put it into all our soil mix that we're putting into these greenhouses at Acorus Restoration and these are our vegetable plants so we're putting it into our garden and one of the most effective ways we find is actually putting it right into the pot right at the root system. So the microorganisms are all right there right at the beginning and so when you move the pot outside you're actually moving all the microorganisms with the plant so then you're putting it in the garden as well and we'll go over to the garden in a minute and we'll show you how we've used it over there so about 10 percent and we mix it all in we've got our organic mix and then I used probably about 50 percent sand because I like a little better drainage and then about 10 percent biochar so mixing all that up together makes a really strong very solid nursery mix for growing your plants We're out in one of Whole Village's gardens, and we, this is a recently established bed. Uh, it was full of weeds before, so what we did was we solarized the bed with black plastic. We left that on for about a year, and what that does is kill all the, uh, the different weeds, but it also affects the bacteria in the soil, so we need to put the bacteria that we want back in to the soil, the different funguses that make healthy soil. And so what we've done is we've added about 10% of the biochar. You can see some of the pieces here. And so we've added about 10% of this biochar. And then, so onto the bare soil we put the biochar. We put a little bit of wood ash for some more potassium. And we've also added a lot of this leaf mulch, well composted leaf mulch, which they had here. So you can use different things for mulching, 
uh, straw, different things like that. Uh, you can also add compost onto here. So once the, the bed's established, then you can dig into the, into the garden. And for typically when you plant, you want to get past the mulch down to the bare soil. So we've got about uh, 5 to 10 centimeters of mulch on the top of here. And then you can, as you dig down, you'll be able to see some of the carbon that's down here. Put about 10% carbon. So one of these beds, we put in uh, two bags, two feed bags full of biochar spreading it out evenly on the top. We didn't bother to incorporate it over time. The different worms and different creatures in the soil will move it around and incorporate it into the soil. And we put this, uh, this nice leaf mulch on top. It's some well composted leaf mulch over the top. It has a mulch to hold some moisture onto the soil and help suppress any weeds that might come up. We are still getting a few weeds initially but they're so easy to pull out because they're just in the mulch and they're not very strong. But over time, as I think I said before, this is going to mature more and more. This is year one, so it won't be quite as vigorous in the first year, but by year three, you're going to be seeing the plants growing super vigorous and really healthy. In conclusion, I just want to say we're here. We're available. If you have questions, please ask questions in the comments or different ways of contacting us, our Facebook page, or our web page. And we'll put that into the information at the bottom. But, but be curious, ask questions. We're here to, to teach and to share. I mean, I've got 25 years of doing ecological restoration and Sophie's also got more as an agronomist. You know, she's been doing the same amount of work. So, just working with these systems and, and understanding them. I can't say that I've got all the answers, but I'm curious and open to learning. And that's the most important step, is just being curious. So ask questions. We're here to answer. We're, you know, we'll mentor people. We're happy to do that. We've had volunteers in the past and interns and lots of interns as well. So, you know, just ask your questions and, and be with us. Thank you. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for coming out. Uh, if you want to find out more about Acorus Restoration, it's acorusrestoration.com. If you want to find out more about our work in the Yucatan, it's Earth Connection Center. And you can also support us on Patreon uh, on our Planet Healers. And if you're interested in coming out, please come out and enjoy this place, Red Hole Village in Ontario.